He's won two Emmys. He's a successful author of five books, including The New Health Age, The Future of Healthcare and Medicine in America, and his most recent book is Privacy Dead, The Future of Privacy in the Digital Age. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have the mic up all right? In the back? Okay, good. So, I am a futurist, and I define what I do as being a cavalcade of people, companies, governments, and the world to think about the future and then to facilitate a conversation about it. So today I want to get you to think about the future in ways perhaps you haven't, and then perhaps we have time to dialogue about it. The second thing I want to say before I start this presentation is that I'm really honored to be here today. In fact, I am joyful. Because when I wrote a book three years ago called The New Health Age, I profiled Dr. Debbie Shetty in that book as an exemplar of what the new health age would be. So to me, it's such an honor to be here because this really is one of the manifestations of the new health age that we're all in. So we're in the 21st century. We're in a new millennium. We're in a new century, a new age, and a new decade. There hasn't been that alignment in human history. Of course, there's been a new millennium and a new century. But think about it. Here in 2014, we are a little bit more than 1.3% into this new millennium. Now, the last time that sentence could be said was 1014, depth of the dark ages, Vikings rule the seas. If you can accept an easy premise that the speed of change is 10 times faster than it was when the Vikings ruled the seas, then all of the change that humanity has experienced in the last millennium will be re replicated in the next 100 years. If you accept my supposition as a futurist that the speed of change is arguably 100 times faster than the Vikings rule the seas, then all of the change that we've experienced as a species for the last thousand years will be replicated in the next 10. So sometime between 10 and 100 years, whatever your comfort zone is, we will experience a millennium's worth of transformation and change. Now, the shift age, I don't have time to go into it. I coined the phrase, we left the information age and entered the shift age. But I called it the shift age because I knew that all aspects of society would undergo some shift and different rates of shift. The two points of the shift age I want to comment on real quickly. There's one characteristic of it is the flow to global. It's beyond the global economy. We're getting organized around a global construct. In fact, we have entered the global stage of human evolution. We've gone from family to tribe to village to city to city state to nation state, and our only remaining boundaries for now are planetary. So we're in the global stage of human evolution. Everything is moving global. The single most powerful force on the planet today is the accelerated electronic connectedness of the planet. Many people think that's the internet. As Samir so pointedly pointed out, it's this. It took 20 years to go from the first cell phone subscriber to the billions. It took four years to go from one to two, two years to go from three to four. Today, there's 7.2 billion humans on the planet and 6.1 billion humans have cell phones. So you take away the very young and those that can't get coverage from the Himalayas and the Andes and you have cell phone ubiquity. Now what does that mean? It means that Dr. Shetty get his card, so I do have a cell phone. If I were to call his cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, I just, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five seconds, Dr. Shetty's phone would ring. If I were to call somebody in China 12,000 miles away, maybe another two seconds because of the relay of the satellite. So cell phone ubiquity means the difference between 20 feet and 12,000 miles is two seconds. So there's no time or distance limiting human communication. Question to the room, I'll blow that audience interaction here. I've asked this question 600 times, I've always gotten the right answer, don't let me down. <laughs> if you're on a cell phone to cell phone conversation, right, cell phone to cell phone, hey, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? What's one of the next questions you ask? Anybody? Where are you? So there is no time, distance, or place any longer limiting human communication. In one of the largest experiences that we have as humans, communication, Place is irrelevant. You saw the eye care yesterday, right? Dr. Shetty can be here and deal with the patient in Bangalore. Place has become irrelevant. Now, the transformation decade, an 010110, interesting digital date. I named it the transformation decade, and it blew up, and I said, okay, I'm on to something. 
The dictionary definition of transformation is a change in nature, shape, character, and form. So this is the decade when most of human, humanity's institutions and our thoughts are going to change their nature, shape, character, and form. So when I do corporate retreats, I say to the CEOs and companies, if you're not in the business of changing the nature, shape, character, form of your company, you may not have one by 2020. And what are we doing here today? We're changing the nature, shape, character, and form of healthcare. Now, the other reason this is a transformation decade is the developed countries of the world have kind of powered into the 21st century with 20th century thought. If you're older than 40, you've spent the majority of your time in the 20th century, very formative times. So we are looking into the 20th century through the filter of 20th century thought. This is the decade that's going to fall away. The way I know that, just think about 20th century, whatever comes to mind, 20th century. American century, century of World War, century of science, began 1914 to 1918. Russian Revolution, first industrialized World War, general theory of relativity, the map of Europe as we know it. Unfortunately, the map of the Middle East is the Europeans did it with those right angles in the desert. So all the storylines the last hundred years started in the second decade of the last century. I think future historians can look back and go, this is the decade where humanity started thinking 21st century thought. So what is 21st century healthcare? That's why we're here. And the new health age, let me talk about that because that's why I'm here. The new health age is very recent. We are the latest iteration of humanity. Modern humanity, we've been around for 150,000 years. Modern medicine is about 150 years old. The telegraph is older than modern medicine. The landline phone is about the same age as modern medicine. And look how much communication technology has changed since then. That's what's going to happen in healthcare. So when I wrote this book with my co-author, Jonathan Fleece, we tried to get at the dynamic flows underpinning all the change in healthcare. We got it down to nine dynamic flows, and I probably have time to really go through it, but they break down into three. How do we think about it? Prevention. How do we deliver it? You know, we've got just to run by sickness to wellness, ignorance to awareness, treatment to prevention, and procedure to performance. So we are moving to managing healthcare. In 2020, we're not going to call it healthcare, we're going to call it health management. Because that's what we're doing around the world. Prevention and health. That's what it is. Doctors used to get paid by procedures. Now they're going to get paid by keeping their patients, not to be patients, but customers, healthy customers. That's what's going to happen. So in the new health age. So when I was writing this book, David, what are you doing? I'm writing a book about health care. Well, when you say that in 2010 in the United States of America, you get into a political argument, right? So I had to come up with an easy way to describe what healthcare reform meant in the United States of America. And I came up with 80-20. So if you take the 17.2% of the American GDP that's healthcare, round it up to 20. The simple way to think about healthcare reform in the United States is you take everything in the 80% of the GDP that we expect and demand, connectivity, free market competition, price transparency, electronic records, efficiency, and you just bring it into healthcare. So again, audience participation real quickly. I'd like anybody in the room to raise your hand who has ever gone online to do a price or a quality comparison search before buying a major item like a car or a, or a flat screen TV. Raise your hand. Okay, pretty much everybody. Same question. Raise your hand if you've ever gone online to do a price or quality related comparison for having a major medical procedure. Just a couple, right? There you have it. I could keep giving you examples of that to kind of sure. David, what are, the, what are the qualities of the future in the new health age for medicine? Efficiency, quality, and price. What are we talking about here in, the, in, in ACCI? We're talking about Greater efficiency, higher quality, and a lower price. Connectivity is, the, is another critical ingredient. Those that win in the new health age will be providing efficiency, quality, and price. So here I am closing up the conversation we've been having all day about this. The other thing as a futurist, 
and I was doing a lot of research for this book. This decade is the most transformative decade in the history of medicine in the world. There are medical miracles around the corner. DNA pharmaceuticals, genetic treatment of cancer, treating aging as a disease. You know, I joined Kurzweil and, uh, and others who say, if you're over 40, stay as healthy as you can, because by 2025, there will be procedures and devices and technologies that will add decades to your life. <laughs> Literally. So, so we live in one of the most wonderful times. We've got the quantitative self. We can all measure our, our biometrics with apps. It's all here. So it's a wonderful time. It's a true honor to be here. This really is the beginning of the new health age. And I have to say, uh, relative to that 80 20, I want to make one line I took. About a year ago, an internist at the University of Iowa called 100 American hospitals and asked them a one sentence question How much does it cost in your hospital to get a hip replacement surgery? 100 hospitals, 50 couldn't answer the question. And of the 50 that did, literally, the price range was $11,200. To 125,500. So you take that as a snapshot of the landscape of hospitals in the United States. Is there any doubt that Health City is going to be a beacon of light and a signpost in the future for the United States? Is there any doubt that the innovative partnership that Ascension is doing here is going to allow them to be even more competitive into their compassionate view in healthcare? to the United States, and if you take this small island country, is there any doubt that this small island country is going to show up north how to do it? No question at all. That's why it's such a wonderful day to be here, and I thank you very much. Thank you. So it's February 25th, 2000.